How's it guys? Grant from Cape Snake Conservation here. In today's snake ID video, we're going to be looking at the Karoo Whip Snake. Yow. Whip snakes get their name from the behavior of whipping around when they try to get away from you. I don't recommend picking them up because they do possess a mild venom, although it is really of no consequence to man at all, but just to be safe, some people might have a more severe reaction like with a bee sting, it's always better to play it on the safe side. But they are very hesitant to bite these snakes, they're very reluctant to bite. I've never had one strike at me and they really are quite interesting little animals. Their defense is to either move away as quickly as they can or if they're being grabbed by a predator or a person, to whip their bodies around violently in order to try and get that animal or person or whatever to let them go. The Karoo whip snake, which is the subject of today's video, could quite possibly be confused with the worm slung and it could also possibly be confused with some of the other whip snakes. The most common that we get here is the cross marked whip snake or the crossed whip snake. Then I think because of the coloration, the typical coloration that we get in the Western Cape or in Cape Town anyway, it might even be confused with a slug eater. And as we've done the slug eater already, I thought it'd be quite nice to compare them all. So here are those four snakes. Once again, I'm not going to tell you which one of these snakes is the Karoo Whip Snake. At the end of this video, I'll show this picture again and you can tell me which one of these four snakes you think is the Karoo Whip Snake. Right, let's get into it. So here are four ways that will help you learn to ID a Karoo Whip Snake. Number one is the color. Color is never a surefire way to be able to ID any snake because they can show variation and they can be quite similar to other snakes. So it is always best to proceed with caution when it comes to color. The Karoo Whip Snake, typically in the Western Cape seems, the ones that I've caught in the Western Cape anyway, all seem to be quite similar in that they have this striking yellow underbelly. Now, in a lot of them, it can also be a white color. If you remember, the Slug Eater also has a, has a yellow or pale stripe that runs down the, the bottom of the body. The biggest difference with the Karoo Whip Snake and the Slug Eater is that the Karoo Whip Snake's underbelly, the, the color on the other underbelly actually extends all the way around the flanks, all the way around to the side of the body. Whereas with the slug eater, it is strictly limited to the bottom center portion of the body. So from that perspective, if you do come across in Cape Town or in the Western Cape, a snake that's got a very bright yellow underbelly that extends all the way around the body, then it could be the Karoo Whip Snake. But of course, sometimes this is white, so it could be a little bit confusing. And the worm slung can also have a very yellow underbelly so that's just something to bear in mind when you're looking at color. Number two is the markings. Now the markings on some of the other snakes that are could be confused with this one sometimes are very distinct. For example, the crossed whip snake generally and typically has a very strong band running down the spine, a strong dorsal band, and it's quite thick. So this snake, the Karoo whip snake, doesn't have that thick band running down the spine. In some cases it doesn't have any markings at all, so it could be confused with the Karoo whip snake if the markings on the snake aren't as distinct. But more often than not, on the body itself, running along the spine, it might have a very faint uh, stripe that runs right down the spine. And then parallel to that, on the sides, just on the top of the flanks of the body, it'll have these two pale stripes that runs down the side of the body. And that's quite different to the worm slung and it's quite different to the crossed whip snake and it's very different to the slug eater as well. In individuals that do have these markings and it's got this underbelly that's yellow or white that extends all the way around, then you could look at that and use those two things together to try and ID the snake. The head also sometimes is quite a distinct marking. Something that I've noticed in this animal is that on the side of the head, you sometimes get this loop of coloration which leaves a pale marking inside that loop. And that for me is quite distinctive of the snake, but it really isn't something that I think most people are going to see, especially because the snake is often moving quite quickly and it's very difficult to actually pick that up in photographs. But if you do get a good shot of the side of the head, then looking for that, that's quite a good feature to look out for. Another marking that I find quite distinctive on the Karoo whip snake is that is actually just below the eye. It almost has a little teardrop. It might not be present in all the individuals, but it's different to the Karoo whip snake and it's different to the worm slung. So you've got a pale kind of an extension of the underbelly that comes up around the eye, but just below the eye, you've got a little dot of coloration that you could call a teardrop. And that is quite distinct of the snake. So again, if you've got a good side on headshot of the snake, look out for that teardrop 
and combine it with some of the other features and you can be pretty confident that what you're looking at is a Karoo whip snake. Number three is the body shape. The Karoo whip snake and all of the whip snakes for that matter are very slender and they've got incredibly long tails. It's quite amazing. And that slender body shape is quite different to all of the other snakes that we get. That's quite distinctive of the whip and the sand snakes. So if you do see a snake that is fairly big, let's say 80 centimeters to about a meter, which is the maximum roughly that a Karoo whip snake gets to, then if it's got a very slender body, then it's not a worm slung. The worm slung are quite thick. You could quite confidently then know that it's not a worm slung. But of course, once again, you shouldn't be handling any of these snakes if you don't know what they are. And you have to be careful that you're not using a single feature to ID the snake and you're missing some other important parts of it. But that slender nature of the body really is quite different to the other snakes. Sluggy deers are never going to get that big. So even, even just that, even just that slender nature, even when it's a small snake, just that slender body shape is already telling you that it's probably one of the whip or the sand snakes. Right, and number four is the behavior. So these snakes, like I said earlier, are incredibly active, they're incredibly quick, and they're incredibly alert. What they usually do to get away from a predator or any kind of threat is that they will bolt off into a bush and you often think that they've actually disappeared and then they'll freeze and camouflage themselves within the vegetation. It appears that they've got very good eyesight because when I'm taking pictures of these animals, you can actually see the eyeball moving around and following me, seeing what I'm doing. That is actually one of their big defenses is that they will stay completely motionless and they will just sit and they will just wait and they will just watch. So in terms of their behavior, they're incredibly quick and you'll often see them bolting past a path or a road or something like that. And when they do bolt off, if you look very carefully, you might actually find that they are actually frozen motionless in, in the bush or vegetation nearby where they're trying to hide. If of course somebody has positively ID'd the snake or they have picked it up, maybe not the best idea, but maybe it has been done. Then if you see the snake whipping around frantically, that's typical behavior of the whip snakes and that can help you to understand exactly what snake it is that you are dealing with. So just to recap, the four main things that you can look out for with the snake are color, typically in the Western Cape, that yellow underbelly that extends all the way around on the sides of the body, but of course it may also be white. In terms of the markings, you've got the parallel pale stripes that are running down the back of the body. You've also got the loop on the head and also the teardrop, which I think is a really good one to look out for if you've got good pictures. They have a very slender body, an incredibly long tail, and they're incredibly quick and you'll probably only get a fleeting glimpse of them crossing a road or a footpath. Right guys, that's a Karoo Whip Snake. I really hope that these four tips have helped you to understand the snake a little bit better. It really is an awesome snake. I actually got the snake on call out a few days ago, but the weather was really bad so I chose to hold on to it until we got some good weather so the weather's awesome at the moment I'm gonna go release it once again we've got a challenge for you now I'm gonna put up those pictures that I put up at the beginning of this episode and I want you to see if you can use these four tips to positively ID a Karoo Whip Snake good luck I hope you get the right answer thanks again for tuning in see you next time